welcome to the Boston Roll channel. If you want to support my daily Eternal Magic offerings while getting amazing perks like the Boston Roll Discord community, have me play your deck on the channel, or list inside more guides before tournaments, check out the Patreon or YouTube membership program. This channel is possible because of these amazing sponsors. Check them out, all their links are in the video description. As always, thanks for being here. Let's go play some Magic. Welcome back to the Boston Roll channel. Today, at the request of Patreon subscriber Serial, I am playing Agatha's Soul Cauldron, Urza Thopter Combo. Urza is one of my favorite cards printed in the recent quarter of Magic the Gathering's existence. I was going to say in the last few years, but it's probably four or five years old at this point, and time is fake, and it's a construct, and it doesn't make any sense. But Urza, been around quite a while now, but one of my favorite cards printed recently. The combo here is with Thopter Foundry. You can pay one to sacrifice a non-token artifact. If you do, make a 1-1 blue Thopter and gain one life. Sword of the Meek is a non-token artifact that you can sacrifice, and whenever a 1-1 enters the battlefield under your control, you can return this from your graveyard to the battlefield and attached to that creature. Urza lets you tap artifacts for blue. The combo here is tap Sword of the Meek for blue, sacrifice it to Thopter Foundry, get a 1-1, Sword of the Meek returns to play, attach to that 1-1, and untapped, or you can tap it for blue and do it again. That's infinite life and infinite Thopters, and it's infinite mana with Urza, because you can also tap the Thopters, you net one blue mana each round, and Urza's other ability, 5, shuffle your library, exile the top card, until in turn you may play that card out paying its mana cost. Very difficult to execute on Magic Online because of the clicking, but once you have infinite life, infinite Thopters, you can also cast your whole deck with Urza. The Soul Cauldron layer to this, this is a new card, one that I have been getting smoked by and confused by on the channel for the next, or for the last several weeks. I finally get to play with it myself. This is the first of a couple Soul Cauldron decks that are coming to the channel. Stay tuned for those. Two mana artifact. Legendary artifact. That's important, actually, because there's more than one. You may spend mana or any mana to activate color. I'll try that again. You may spend mana as though or mana of any color to activate abilities of creatures you control. Creatures you control with plus one counters on them have all activated abilities of all the creature cards exiled with Agatha's Soul Cauldron. Tap, exile target creature from a graveyard, or target card from a graveyard. When a creature is exiled this way, put a plus one counter on target creature you control. Okay, so the story here is Agatha is boiling down dead monsters into plus one counters and special abilities for your other creatures who drink her spooky potion. That's super cool. Let's look at the creatures in this deck. Haywire Might, in a pinch, you could give all your creatures green sacrifices, exile something. Ledger Shredder doesn't have any activated abilities, but it does come with its own plus one counters. It, Agatha doesn't say tap target creature gains these abilities. They're separate abilities, and if something happens to have its own plus one counters, it gains all the abilities anyway. Rona, a looter. All your creatures can learn how to loot. Unfortunately, the transform doesn't actually do anything if you give that to another creature, because if you try to transform a card with only one side, nothing happens. But you can turn all your things into looters. Emery Lurker of the Lock. All your creatures gain tap. You can cast target artifact from your graveyard this turn. Urza, all your creatures gain tap and untap artifact you control, add blue, and five shuffle your library, exile the top card, etc. And then, Walking Ballista, all your creatures gain, remove the plus one counter to ping something, and four, put a plus one counter on it. This is infinite with Urza. This is a on the spot GG in paper magic. If you make infinite mana, cast your deck. Eventually, you'll cast an Agatha Soul Cauldron and a Walking Ballista. Because the Ballista came out of Urza, X has to be zero. It dies. You just exile it with the Cauldron, give that ability to whatever creature's around, and then sink mana four at a time into pumping that creature plus one counters, and then remove all the counters. This is a contained win. In paper, it is a very difficult win to execute online. And some spice from Cereal. Two copies of Grizzle Brand. Why the hell not? With the Ledger Shredders, the Ronas, the Emrys in the deck, it should be pretty easy to mill past the Grizzle Brand or put it in your graveyard somehow. And that's a nice one to have under an Agatha Soul Cauldron. Every creature is Grizzle Brand? I'll take that. We should probably be able to find a win from there. And that's what's going on here. It's a wild deck. I'm excited to try it. Let's jump in. This is the Grizzle Thopter combo. 
I'm on the draw in round one. I'm going to keep this in. Maybe Island Preordain keep isn't fast enough for modern these days, but I like what's going on here with these two Emrys. Opponent's got a Steam Vince. And I think I want to invest in the Spell Bomb because that guarantees Emery on two, which the Preordain does not do unless it finds a Bobble. Seed of the Synod still unfairly banned in this format. Unfairly is uh, not true. It's completely fair. That card's cracked. Orcus Bowmaster versus... Ooh. I could just cast Emery into open Counterspell and Lightning Bolt. Or I could play Orcus Bowmaster into possible Cantrip. Opponent's doing something. They have a land drop. I'm luckily pretty resilient to Blood Moon. Be kind of surprised if that's what happens here, but I am good against it if it were to happen. There's a Goblin Shaman. I think I just get Basic Swamp here and send in the Bowmaster. Pinya. And now because I took the turn off to Bowmaster, I can play Emery and then bounce the Goblin. Emery? Show me the big money. Mishra's Bobble in there. Bounce the Goblin. Attack for two. I expect this deck to be able to bolt my Bowmaster before they have to loot with Fable, but I'll be pleasantly surprised if they don't. But I do have two things in play that both require attention. Try to stretch those bolts a little thin. There's Mario Command, two damage to something, make a treasure. Okay. Okay, this is... Oh, I was about to say this feels like creativity, but what is Basic Island doing in a creativity deck? Interesting. Except in another Steam Vents. Bolted my poor sweet Emery. The Gris Father. Uh, one card too close to the top of the deck here for, for my happiness. Rona and Thopter Foundry are both pretty cool cards. I would like access to this Thopter Foundry, and I'm actually just going to take the Rona right now. I can loot away this Grizzle Brand and play Emery next turn. Warp in mind, okay, they are creativity with a basic island. Are decks just doing that these days? And they get to completely shit murder me here if they have the creativity, which they do. Yeah, X equals 2, and they get to keep the reflection. All right, you did it. That basic island is wild. The Unward Ego, pretty good here. Fatal Push, pretty bad. Spellskite can yoink a, a target. Engineered Explosives can sweep up targets. I like that one. In my experience playing with creativity is I hate how hard you lose to Blood Moon. And maybe Basic Island is a nice way to work around that at least a little bit. It's fair, I guess. Does slow down what the deck's trying to do. Okay, I'm going to keep my hand. I like Ledger Shredder. I like Agatha Soul Cauldron. I like the Thopter Foundries here with Urza beside it. And I am going to get my fetch land for Watery Grave going while I can. Oh, and it's got a preordain. Bottom, bottom, the preordain. Watery Grave. Another foundry. Okay. Shredderino. Make it happen. Dies to Lightning Bolt. Doesn't die to Unholy Heat. Doesn't die to Prismari Command. Okay, preordain would be a sick draw. Oh, that's even better. Okay. I'm going to play this island. And this Agatha Soul Cauldron. Are they going to counterspell this? Disappointing. Okay, it's fine. Mishra's Bobble. Get a trigger. Walking Ballista. In hand. I don't need two Thopter Foundries where I'm going. Bobble you. Wearing Scalding Tarn. Okay. At least we got a counterspell and not a uh, spell pierce, which was just as clean. I wanted to lead on the Soul Cauldron, though, because they get to see the connive before they have to decide if they need to fight over that, and I wanted that too late to be a consideration for them. This was Bobble, okay. Haywire Might, I can use here. I have four to play Urza. I'm in a little bit of a squeeze all the way around. I think it has to be either Spell Bomb, and then I Fetch Shock for... The Greenland, just in case Haywire Might shows up at some point. Urza. And Mishra's Bobble connives. Discard the Polluted Delta. And then I have three mana available. I'm going to play Walking Ballista. X equals one. I would just like to get this into play. That turns off Dwarven Mine as a possible out. And I am going to Bobble them. Let's say Meyer is the draw. 
Aether Spell Bomb doesn't need to tap to activate. Oh, there we go. Glad I fetched the, the green. Cycling Xander's Lounge. Desperate. They discarded a Tarn and an Archon, and then just straight up conceded. Heck yeah, let's go. And the Fulminator Mage is interesting. This deck does care about its land count quite a bit. If I can hit a non-basic mountain, it time walks their whole combo turn. I don't know if that's where I want to be. I think I'd rather just try to combo over the top of them. Let's do it. I will keep this. Haywire Mike can answer a Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Rear Dan gets the party going. Rona's pretty cool. Xander's Lounge just hanging out there and me without a Fulminator. Thopter Foundry and Urza Saga. I'm going to top top this. This is all part of a balanced breakfast. If I'm going to combo off, this is how it happens. They have a fetch land. I'm drawing Foundry. It's going to play Rona here. Maybe she gets countered spelled. Maybe she doesn't. Manamo untaps Rona for extra looting. It's just good deck building there. Yep, counter spell. It's firing it off willy nilly. Opponent's been extremely skilled at turn three Fable the Mirror Breaker. Be a good turn to draw on Mordigo. Couldn't get there. Okay. I can exile the Fable, or I can develop my Saga and exile the Fable next turn. I think I want to develop my Saga. Might be too late. But also, maybe they respect blue mana and don't just goldfish me here, which they definitely do if I tap out. I discarded a counterspell and an Archon. Dwarven Mine. Okay. Alpine Moon. Shit. Well, if I respond to this, they know they're free to go off. But if I don't, then they're also free to go off. Okay. I'll get a Swamp and make a construct while well, I still can before my land's gone. And if they just attack, make a treasure, second main creativity, I lose. That Rona was pretty important. They did a good job countering it. Not going to block. Okay, they didn't do it. Doesn't necessarily mean they don't have it. I think I play a Thopter Foundry here, have a 2-2 creature, and threaten Spell Pierce or similar. Bolting my construct in response, you got it. I'm in a lot of trouble. Even if they don't have a creativity, I'm just way far behind. Their cards are better than mine. No doubt about it. I have no blocks, no effects here. Played another Xander's Lounge. Two cards in their hand. Time to get the Breeding Pool. Ugh, this is too many of these. I'll play Minamo and Haywire Might. And I can't afford to play the Thopter Foundry here. And I'm just... Oh no! Reflection isn't a creature anymore, shit. I forgot how this card works. Okay. I punted a little bit. I forgot last turn was the last time I could get rid of the reflection, and now I'm just dead to everything. Yeah, that sucks. Whoops. That's gotten me so many times. You'd think I'd learn, but I think I mostly know how this card works now, except miss the step of this non-creature enchantment becomes a creature enchantment. Okay, still no blocks. Just not doing anything. Super embarrassing. Waiting to die. They can cast an Archon at this point. If they have a land, they can cast and copy an Archon. Yeah, we're good. I can stuff one of these. I guess I will. And that's what I got. And they get their other thing. And they can copy that thing. It's after combat, so that matters less now. But even if I just like draw Urza, it gets really hard to get out from under this. When they can Edict me at will. Okay, they're going for it now. That's kind of refreshing, actually. I'll discard Grizzlebrand. Okay, I don't know how I actually win the game here. That wasn't it. Okay. Uh, that was a kicking. Yeah, they're also a combo deck, but their combo pieces function as magic cards when they're not comboing, and they have a better combo than me. Not surprised we lost that one. Let's go. This video is sponsored by Moxfield.com, the easiest way to build magic decks online. Moxfield supports over 30 formats, including Legacy and everything else you'll see on this channel. There's multiple customizations so you can interact with your deck how you want. Views such as text, grid, or stacks, and groupings like type, subtype, color, color identity, even artist. The site offers light mode, dark mode, and so much more. However you want to see your deck, Moxfield can provide it for you. Follow my Moxfield to keep up with the channel and what I'm playing in paper. I'll see you there. I'm on the play against the Gigantha deck. I'm going to keep my hand. I like the Rona quite a bit. I'm going to play Ottawara to start. That leaves my options open with Rona or Bowmaster next turn. 
and I kind of want explosives on one right now. Gigantha decks are frequently like Grixis or Jun Shadow decks. They have Ragavan, they have Death Shadow. There's a lot of cool one drops in there that I would like to stop. What a Foothills pass deal. Ooh, I could swamp Emery here, or I could Saga Emery, or I could Saga Rona, or I could swamp Hold Up Bowmaster. I don't think Holding Up Bowmaster is the way. I'm pretty into Emery, actually. She's on the stack. Let's go. Sort of the meek in the bin. Opponent knows what I'm about now. Orcish Bowmaster hilariously triggers Sword of the Meek. How do you feel about a 2-3 Orcish Bowmaster in the middle of combat? They could kill Emery in the end step, then dash a Ragavan and sneak around the Engineered Explosives. They just got a tap Stomping Ground instead, though. A basic Mountain. They can't play Scape Shift with Gigantha in their deck. Haywire Might. Powerful. Do you want my Urza Saga or my Engineered Explosives? Going for the Saga. Fair enough. That is a powerful effect. No doubt about it. Ooh, if they bobble me now, they get to sneak it through my Bowmaster. Ooh. Couldn't wait till my upkeep to hit me with that. Coward. Another Emery. I could play Rona. I could play Bowmaster. I could play the other Emery, mill some stuff, try to get action going. I think I want Rona. And then Emery just attacks here. Get her in. I both feel like Orcish Bowmaster is anemic here and also makes it very obvious what I'm up to when I have an Emery I could cast and just don't do it. Even if it's just a mill for, it's still largely worth doing. An enemy saga. Are they going to play my other least favorite card, Fable the Mirror Breaker, right now? Ragavan. They did have it the whole time. 1 3. Untouchable. Got something else going on here, too. Two men is in the pool. Change their mind. Mox Amber. Okay, so they're a breach deck of some variety. This isn't just in normal decks, I don't think. Okay. Shooting my Rona. Disappointing. I wanted that. Fatal Push is cool. I'm just going to Bowmaster right now. Clear the Ragavan. Turn off the Mox Amber. Sort of the Meek Trigger. So funny. I love this. And attack with Emery again. Not what she's supposed to do, but it's what we've got. Their Saga's ticking up. Don't like that. Right, that Haywire Might was really solid. That's I just haven't replaced that land at any point. I haven't made this Emery any cheaper. Didn't get to get my Springleaf Drum. There's nothing good going on here. Showing off over there. They heard me say it. Ooh, okay. Bowmaster can attack here. If they make a 3-3, I can kill it with my Engineered Explosives by clearing their Springleaf Drum. I do have two artifacts now. Emery is the minimum... Keep the original one. Mill four. Can I have something to play here? Absolutely not. Not an artifact in my graveyard to be seen. I am going to shock in Watery Grave, threaten the activation of Engineered Explosives. Not that it's particularly threatening, but it might come up. I wonder if they just get Adel here to turn off Explosives. And it's better off in play if that's what's happening. Because then they can't needle Emery. Shadow Spear. All right, that's a one drop. Uh-oh. More stuff. Not particularly effective stuff, though. That's fine. I'm gonna pop my explosives here. That kills the Springleaf Drum and the Shadow Spear, shrinks their homie. And I think I can afford to take three, though, knowing that they're a Grape Shot deck, this three damage might... Oh, this block is totally free, because the only reason I wouldn't block is to keep pressure on to explode for zero next turn, and that token dies in the zero anyway. Okay. Urza, what's up, big guy? That's kind of the nuts. I don't think I can play him this turn, though, because I don't want his construct to die. I'm just going to explode this for zero and bust it, holding up Fatal Push. Going to do it right now. We take the Mox Amber with us. Destroy none of my things, three of yours. I can Fatal Push a Ragavan if they've been sandbagging one. And then Urza shows up to do stuff next turn. This is where they slam Breach, and all of that was an elaborate ruse to clear my Engineered Explosives. Experimental Synthesizer, awesome. I'm so excited for this card. Popper Staple. Oh, they did flip a Ragavan. And they're dashing it. Good thing I have that covered. It's not even a huge deal to take a Rag hit, but having this sweet little perfect lineup here is great. I'm going to get the Breeding Pool tapped in the end step, and then we'll see where this game can go from there. Dr. Foundry for the win. 
Bobble's pretty cool. That's great with Emery. Urza, Lord High Artificer. In we go. Bobble. I'm just going to Bobble twice here. You see a Wooded Foothills on top of their deck. Emery target Bobble. Bobble you again. I'll just look at that card twice. It's fine. I want the cards in my hand. And attack for two. Next turn, I think I'll play an Explosives for two and just make sure that I don't die to Breach. But that turn, I didn't have the mana to do it and pop it in the turn cycle, so it, it didn't need to happen. DRC, that dies to my thing. I still don't have any ones. Crack in their fetch. And remember to put Jack in their hand. Okay, fair. That's a thing you can do. Dr. Foundry, how about infinite everything? How do we feel about that? I'm going to start with the engineered explosives, though. Explosives for x equals 1. This also doesn't tap to activate, so you can put 1 in the bank. It doesn't matter if your equipment is tapped. It's totally free clearing of all their permanents. They flipped a Ren and 6. And I have Blue Black Thopter Foundry. This is actually lethal immediately because the construct gets bigger every time I do this. Always yield. Always yes. This gets a lot faster on Magic Online if you hold down W. That's the hold mana abilities button. Opponents said they uh, haven't seen this before, so they want to click through it, and I just pointed out that it's all on board. Okay, sure. This is just the clicky clicky time. Cool, we did it. We're against some kind of gruel breach. I believe that's an aspiring spike thing that has been played in the past. I might have even played it on this channel. Who even knows at this point? I've done it all. I've seen the world. Pithing Needle for Grinding Station stops the breach. Tormod's Crypt stops the breach. I don't want to go too crazy on that. Fatal Push this is good against Ragavan. I haven't seen any huge creatures other than the Jaggy, so I think Fatal Push is strictly an upgrade to Murderous Cut. Well, not strictly. I just said Jaggy, but mostly an upgrade. Enough of an upgrade. We saw Saga... Do I want to be fulminating this deck? I like the Soul Cauldron. I like the Haywire Might. I'm not going to fulminate them. Engineered Explosives was a, a absolute heater. Bowmaster was cool. We saw Bobbles and Ragavans. I guess that's enough to leave that card in your deck for. It's my reflex to shave on Bobbles, but we're a Ledger Shredder Emery deck. That sounds like a huge mistake. I hate to trim a Grizzle Brand every time, but I mean... It really is the worst and cluckiest card in the deck. Haywire might sits in play and stops Breach from happening. We just shave a Preordain in service to Grizzlebrand. All right, I'm doing it. Okay, uh, I'll keep this. It's got some mana issues, obviously, but here we are. Doesn't answer Ragavan on turn one. Disappointing. Emery, it does block Ragavan on turn one now. We did it. I have to play Explosives for zero for this to work, but I think it's worth doing to stop the rag beats, or at least slow down as much as I need to, the rag beats. Bobble you, Unholy Heat on top, great. We're not stopping anything. Good to know. But I do get a rebuy into Black Mana that can stabilize against this rag with the Bowmaster, if Black Mana is forthcoming. Unholy Heat, piece of candy. Well done. I have a 1-3 for next turn. You can also just Ballista this thing. Okay, nothing too bad, please. They exiled Fatal Push. Okay. I both couldn't cast that, and they don't have a target for it. Oh, we're Rug. Rug Breach. Ren N6. Yeah, that card's pretty good. Picking up the Wooded Foothills. Okay, Urza Saga. Get in there. And I'm going to put Rona into play, rather than spending my Ballista just to clear a Ragavan. The Sword of the Meek is... Entirely free to discard. Uh, minusing the Ren, they must have another Heat. Yep, okay. That certainly works. Rag gets another taste here. I can make a Construct next turn to block it. Took my Rona. That's really bad for them to have. They are a Graveyard Synergy deck that's trying to get multiple pieces together. Just like me. Ragavans and Ren and Sixes untap. The Rona, so does Mox Amber. It also gives Mox Amber another color. Woof. Awful stuff for me. Another Saga. And I certainly have a lot of these. 
We've got a fetch land. Grinding station. Uh-oh. I'm in danger. They sack their treasure to mill themselves for three. They hit two sagas and uh, foothills. Okay. Underworld breach. Okay. Oh, yeah. With Mox Amber. Or I can... Nope. Busting engineered explosives on Mox Amber doesn't actually help me here. What, what needs to happen? How, how can I get out of this? Is it possible to whiff here? I guess if the Grape Shot, if the Mox Amber shows up too late and they don't have enough cards in their deck to mill, that could mess me up or mess them up. Is that even a thing? I don't actually know. Well, I'm going to make them figure it out. They have exactly one extra escapes worth of cards in their graveyard. Once they are no, once they find the Mox Amber, the Rona actually pops off because every time they cast Mox Amber, they get to loot and they get to pad out the cards in the graveyard. There's the Amber. They found it way before they found the Grape Shot. Now I think I just die. They didn't loot with Rona, though. Didn't want it. Oh, they did afterwards. Yeah, that's so messed up. Does Rona belong in Rug Breach? Don't they just want to play this card? And because Rona's blue, they can play Emery, which makes the deck mill faster. Okay, yeah, I can't do anything here. Maybe they'll mess up and deck themselves before they have Grape Shot available. I don't know. Doesn't seem likely. I don't mean to just bad matters, make them play it out. I just am not sure that I'm dead here. There's 24 cards in their graveyard, and they need 11 more Storm, or they need to find the Grape Shot at 10 Storm and do it twice. All of this seems really attainable. And yeah, I guess I'm still on Grape Shot needs to be like the bottom card of their deck. This is also a combo that shows me your whole deck when you execute it, so seeing your sideboard plan and stuff is relevant to making you play it out. Okay, Grape Shot from hand. This is lethal. You did it. Okay. I also wasn't a 20 when that started, so my whole count was wrong. Okay. <laughs> Awkward. Okay, uh, my Rona won them the game. They might have been able to do that with just red men off the Ragavan, but disappointing. I can't really Chalice on zero in my deck. The Explosives is a powerful tool. If I just set that on two, they can never do what they just did. No, I'm not going to cut another Preordain for that. Let's make it happen. We're on the play this time. I will keep my hand. This is a turn two Emery. Bobble and Spell Bomb here. And I'm not going to crack the Bobble. By holding on to the Bobble, I can play Emery and Haywire Might next turn in case I need to put something in front of a Rag again. But I'm not going to trade Emery for Rag, so that doesn't actually matter. I can play Emery and hold up Spell Bomb for Rag. That I would do. Springleaf Drum is what they had, though. And their own bobble. And they are spending the bobble. We're both Emery decks. Another bobble. Emery. Do something. I'm Emerying first, because if I hit Sword of the Meek, I get a 2-3. I am going to zap in Watery Grave, because if bobble draws Bowmaster, then that's a card I can play. If they bobble me. All right, I'm bobbling them twice here. They have a breach in their hand, or they're drawing one. I don't think they can win from here, but I've seen weirder things happen. Soul Cauldron, hello. And Urza, okay. Soul Cauldron being passive graveyard hate might also come up in this matchup. You can tap and exile any card from any graveyard. You just only get the benefits if it's a creature. Bobble. Okay, this is not a legend. They could play Breach here and Bobble out of their graveyard and get some surveils, but this is not a critical mass. Unholy heat. My poor Emery. If only there were a way for all of my creatures to have the abilities of Emery. Oh, Pithing Needle. Interesting. I can name Grinding Station with that. Pithing Needle, get in. Name Grinding Station. Agatha Soul Cauldron, get in. Now we decide if I'm on hero mode or not. I think I am going to exile my Emery and try to cast a Bobble here. If they just bolt me. That's her bolt my might. That's shitty. Okay, cool. Cast Mistress Bobble. Get the show on the road. They're drawing the grinding station. That pithing needle was duress. We did it. And now I need land number four to jam this Urza and become immortal. There it is. If they can clear pithing needle this turn. So they would need two mana for station, two mana for breach, and 
some way to clear Pithing Needle from what's currently representing three mana. I think they're one short of even the most smooth outs that they play. Or maybe I'm just wrong. Let's see what happens here. This could be a value breach now that Grinding Station isn't a thing. They might just bobble three times and pass. Mox Amber. Okay. DRC is not a legend. Ragavan is, though. Okay, here we go. How far does this trail lead? That Mox Amber could be the one missing mana I said that they're not representing right now. Okay, Unholy Heating, my Haywire might. Pretty good value. It did what it was supposed to do, though. It cast the bobble. My Emery is still under this Agatha Soul Cauldron, so I can give Urza all the abilities here. Orkish Bowmaster, wow, that's a good card too. Urza's better. Put Urza in here. Now I have Activate Aether Spellbomb available, and I can put plus one counter and the ability of Walking Ballista on either one of these creatures if that becomes necessary. I can also just tap Soul Cauldron to exile a card from their graveyard. Either playing the station, it does still trigger Surveils. Veil of Summer, yuck. They appear to be passing. End step. I'm going to exile... Ooh, do I want a second Urza? I'm going to exile Urza. Put a counter on Token. Now this has all the abilities of Urza also. Emery, hello, hello. Can we just win? I'm going to tap my Pitting Needle to play Emery. See if we could find that Grizzlebrand. Found another Emery. Okay, we have not quite won the game here. I can attack with my 5-5 five five with the text of Urza on it. I like that. Okay, before damage, make another construct. Put an extra point through. I think I hold on to the Orcish Bowmaster here and onto my Soul Cauldron activation. Okay, they're veiling in the end step just to surveil. If I Bowmaster here, I get to kill a creature, but then they draw a card off Veil. That doesn't sound worth it. Oh, I cast Emery this turn. That was already a draw. Maybe that was worth it. Tight place for tight people. These creatures currently have to attack, and if they attack and they lose Delirium mid-combat, they all die. Underworld Breach. Okay. Trigger, trigger. If I exile their Unholy Heat... They don't have removal. If I let Unholy Heat happen, they might not have Delirium for that card. Also, what am I worried about here? I am going to exile the Unholy Heat. They can attack me for six. What I don't want is my whole board to die. They're casting Ren and Six from the graveyard. Milling a Shadow Spear and a Mountain. That doesn't look like the answer, and it's not. Cool. Two Contraption-y graveyard artifact decks. That could not be more different, but had a lot in common. Cool stuff. Let's go. You come here to level up at Magic. To level up as a software engineer, check out the new YouTube series Dev Better, hosted by the founder of 7 Factor Software and Magic player, Jeremy Duvall. 7 Factor's small teams of high-performing engineers build custom mobile apps, APIs, and highly scalable systems for Fortune 500 companies and ambitious startups with great ideas. If you'd like to hire 7 Factor, or maybe join their team, contact them through their website at 7factor.io. And don't forget to subscribe to 7 Factors YouTube for every episode of Dev Better. I'm on the draw in round three with a pretty cool looking hand. I'm going to keep it. This not only has a turn to Emery, but that Emery taps for mana. Or, see, if I lead on Springleaf Drum, yeah, I can play Emery and Preordain on turn two. Hardened Scales, okay, this is what we're doing. Let's do it. Walking Ballista. Who's the Hardened Scales deck now? I think Springleaf Drum is the, the most explosive investment I can make this turn. If I draw a Bobble, I can Bowmaster and Emery next turn. Uh, okay. That is a 2-2, unfortunately. So lines up extremely well against the Emery I was so excited to have on turn 2. Oh, hello! Okay, what do we do with this? Play Urza Saga. And then I'm gonna play Aether Spellbomb, Emery... And represent Fatal Push. It's unfortunate that this Ballista can just kill my Emery, even if I kill it. If that was like Ravager, this turn would have just gotten really easy. But nothing's easy against Hardened Scales. You're always solving the puzzle. Aether Spell Bomb. Emery. I do have to be careful because they're also a Soul Cauldron deck. And 
my deck is built to have tons of juicy soul cauldron targets and this could go poorly i do think holding up fatal push is the safer way to play this than casting preordain right now another ballista sucks if they just use one of them to clear out the emery oh even better they're gonna go one and one that lets me fatal push one of them and bowmaster the other Cool. Oh, I should have hit the one. Now I'm going to take one. This is a damage I didn't need to take this turn. I just literally, in my brain, I was like, doesn't matter. But it does. Whoops. I love taking one extra damage against the aggro deck that I didn't need to take. I hope they, they put me to exactly dead at the end. Disappointing. Okay, Swamp. Kind of cool, I guess. Orcish Bowmaster. I could Ballista on one, ping their Ballista, then stick my Bowmaster, but I don't actually care about that, and I think Ballista's probably better for the matchup. Bowmaster. I don't get an army. I actually end up with nothing here, but getting the board clear is good for me. I could bounce my Bowmaster, but I think Preordaining and having my Spell Bomb around for later is probably a better use of that. Preordain, show me an Emery. Another Saga and another Preordain. I've already made my land drop for the turn. I am kind of interested in both of these cards. Do I want the full preordained velocity here? I could see the card under Saga. I think I do want to do that. I don't know if I'll have time to do everything I want to do against hardened skills. Bobble and Saga. Bottoming the bobble is the same as keeping the bobble, except I don't see a card. Okay, top top, give me the bobble. I could have kept it to make my constructs bigger. I don't know how important that is. Basilisk Collar is their draw. Okay. Hangerback Walker. Okay. That one is susceptible to either Spellbomb. Okay. We're making constructs here. Only thing left to tutor for is Bobble. All my pieces have been spent. Saga. I can cast this Bowmaster here. Would I rather have cards? Yes. I would like the cards and the information, please. Patchwork Automaton. I think my ultimate goal here is to find a spot where I have a bunch of power in play and I can bounce Hanger Back Walker for profit with the Aether Spell Bomb and make a giant attack. They just stirred for a Saga. Not only is that land number three here on turn five for the first time, but it's a really good one. Ravager, pain in my ass. Okay, that makes it a lot harder to bounce a Hanger Back Walker for profit. All right, maybe I'm just on team combo now. They can't go all in on a creature while I have either Spell Bomb in play, so I think it's okay. And step Bowmaster. Put one in the dome. Another Bowmaster. Luna Delta. Okay, so one, two, three. That's a Saga token. One, two. That's a Bowmaster. If I attack with Construct, how bad can this go for me? I think it's fine. Like if they pile all their junk onto Hangerback Walker. Then I can try to bounce it, and it's gone. Yeah, this is just, like, not a good block. Okay, they're putting Hangerback Walker's counters onto Arcbound Ravager. Okay, um, if I bounce the Ravager now, what happens? Oh, I know what I need to do. Okay, so they get their two cons or their two Thopters, then Ravager becomes 3-3. Three, three. Or 4-4, four, four, that's what I meant. And then I make my thing 4-4. Four, four, and I try to get a trade. And if they sack another thing, I can spell bomb. Or maybe I've baited out as much as I can and need to this turn. Like I could spell bomb this now, but then they just put four counters on this Thopter and I have to beat this flyer. Maybe I messed this up, or maybe this was the goal all along. Try to force some action. What if I Bowmaster the Thopter right now? I think that's the line. Okay, so if I Bowmaster the Thopter now, they can sack Ravager to save it and have a big flyer. And then my construct stays alive. Or they could not sack it, just let it or well they'll they'll sack it and just make Ravager bigger. Then they have this ground pounder that I have a bunch of ways to block. And if they do try to save the flyer, this activation is just in the aether. It's gone. Goes on nothing. Okay, cool. They went in. They have an 8-8 eight, eight Arcbound Ravager. It eats my creature. I've got Ground Pounders. I'm worried about Agatha's Soul Cauldron plus Walking Ballista. 
And the walking bliss is already in the graveyard, so please don't have Cauldron right now. Okay, Hangerback Walker. That's not Agatha's Soul Cauldron. I can live with it. There's only one artifact left in my deck for this Urza Saga. Orc Army is you know, free to die here. Not a helpful permanent. Speaking of not a helpful permanent, just drew Misty Rainforest. Tutor the last tutorable. And I can Ballista for one and still threaten Spellbomb. I guess I just have to play this. It's falling apart quickly here. 6-6 six, six creature. Get in. Okay, from here they can tutor like Zabaz or the Ozolith. There's an Ozolith on top of their deck. Not the one I was talking about, but it's there. They're still holding Patrick Automaton and Basilisk Collar. Ooh, there's my Cauldron. I gotta survive this turn, and then we can make it happen here. They're doing Saga stuff. I think Needle, name either Spellbomb or name Walking Ballista. What's the play? If they spent all this time finding the, the perfect turn to Needle my Spellbomb, they did it. They did, in fact, Spellbomb me. That's work Automaton. That's that one. That's been in their hand forever. We know they can play Basilisk Collar this turn. Buffs the Automaton. Okay. I'm going to jump block with a Bowmaster. Okay, that leaves me with two 5-5s five fives to attack into their two 2-2s. Two or 2-2 two two and 3-3. Three three. Come on, spell. Fatal push. Oh, baby. That is not correct. Uh, well, I can put an extra counter on something. Sucks that this is a legend. Okay. I got the Soul Cauldron. I can exile... Haywire might. I think we're too late for that. And I... Oh, I do have green. Never mind. I do have green. I can exile Ballista and Ballista. Exile Ballista. Put a plus one counter on Construct token. And then play another Soul Cauldron. Which will Legend rule, unfortunately. But there is another Ballista in Graveyards. I'm not smart enough for this. <laughs> what is going on? Uh, I have three direct damage. I have two giant attackers. If I just send the whole party in, they take two, and then I can bring them for another three. That's not very good. And then I die to Ravager on the backswing. Okay, I think I just attack with my constructs. Just my constructs are attacking. They have to block at least one of them or they lose. Good idea, blocking the bigger one. Controversial, but I think it'll hold up. If I exile Ballista now, they take 7, and I can make it 8, 9, 10. That's not lethal. I am going to push the one damage I can push here, though. Exile the other Ballista. Put the Cauldron on the unblocked token. They get two 1-1 one, one Flyers that can be swept up by Ballistas if they need to be. And I'm going to pass. There's no Ballistas in Graveyard, so them drawing a Cauldron isn't lethal off the top. I am likely to have to engage with my Ballista in combat. <laughs> yep, they had one too. Okay. I'm glad I got rid of all of those. All the Ballistas. But if mine dies in combat, I just lose. They're exiling a Hangerback Walker immediately. Cauldrons don't count each other. Okay, they're trying to put a Hangerback counter on this Thopter. I'm just going to ping that. I don't want them to get anything going here. They can sack this to Ravager, but it's not a flying attacker, at least. Yeah, they just don't have good attacks here. That's That gives me a window. A window to draw Rona. And she's a spell in the future. Kind of low impact currently. I can give Orcish Bowmaster the ability of Emery. I could give Orcish Bowmaster the ability of a wire Might. That's probably actually where I want to be. I don't really want my opponent to have the abilities of Emery. Can I win right now, I guess is the question. Okay, so this is kind of tricky because if I give Orcish Bowmaster the plus one counter, if I ping, it no longer has a plus one counter on it, but if I, and if I exile it, then it's gone. Either way, it doesn't have a plus one counter. Opponent's at six. If I bounce Ravager with Aether Spellbomb, like if I, Put a plus one counter on Orcish Bowmaster, exile it to exile Pitting Needle, then Aether Spellbomb their Ravager. I have a 5-5 five five and a 6-6. Six six. 
that can ping the Thopter. I think I have lethal here. Okay. We're about to find out. Exile Haywire Might. Plus one counter on Orcish Bowmaster. Tap it for a green. Exile. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I can do it all. This also has the plus one, plus one counter, but I can do that on the other Blissa too. Yeah, yeah, okay. I forgot I had four mana up. That's also a thing that on this card. Yeah, Exile Pitting Needle. Oh, wait, I don't because... Yeah, yeah, right. Because I have to spend the, the spell bomb. Okay. Bounce Ravager. And then I have two, five, five. I have exactly lethal. I actually have one more than lethal here. What a brain burner. Here they sacked Patchwork Automaton onto Ravager. That's weird. It's about to leave play. Why would you do that? Okay, yeah. All right, neat. Woof, that was wild. Okay, Spellskite can steal modular triggers. They can just decline them when they get there, but it is still worth having. Ceremonies Rejection is a good one here. Hitting Needles, Shadow Spear, Engineered Explosives. Basically, every threat in their deck costs zero. Fulminator Mage is not bad, but it's also not good. Oh, this poor Grizzlebrand. This the, the shave of Grizzlebrand tax. Soul Cauldron, Insano. Definitely won me that game. I actually needed the redundant legendary copy because if there was one ballista in the graveyard when theirs came down, they would have won. Emery is a little bit of a liability, but she's still a core piece of my deck. Orcish Bowmaster is not great here. If they have a single hearted scale, then the Bowmaster just rarely lines up well against anything. It does block nicely. Orc armies come with plus one, plus one counters on them, by the way. Immediately active from Agatha Soul Cauldron. Okay, I'm running it like this. I left the Shouldered Zedix in the sideboard. I feel like they like when they cre their creatures die some amount of the time, especially if they can control what they are. All right, we got the whole shit here. Hardened Scales has a really hard time beating Thopter Sword, even if it's not in infinite. Opponent mob to six. He'll turn one Gemstone Cavern. Stone of Eric. If a creature and opponent controls would die, exile instead. Sacrifice Stone of Eric, exile the target players. Graveyard draw card, sure. I mean, that's pretty good. But also, I can just explosives on one here. Maybe I save the explosives on one for when it kills multiple permanents, and I just invest in Aether's Ball Bomb now. Sword of the Meek is not a creature, so they do need two mana up if they're going to get through, break up my Thopter Sword with Stone of Eric. Okay, uh, that... Watery Grave lets me just jam it if I'm interested in just jamming it. I can also now Explosives on one and play Emery. Or I could save the Explosives for two. I could also ignore the Explosives entirely. I think I'm going to Explosives on one and play Emery. Explosives on one and Emery. Haywire might Shadow Sphere Walking Ballista. Is that a scary enough graveyard for you, opponent? So if they play Agatha's Soul Cauldron here and... Trigger Patchwork Automaton, then Exile Walking Ballista, then they're just completely in control of the game. I can Spell Bomb and Automaton and pay for the ward next turn. I'd rather just march towards the victory, though, if it if you don't mind, opponent. Fitting Needle. Okay. That's why I didn't just try to straight line to the Thopter Foundry. I know they play Needles. I don't want them to have access to that sort of thing and shut off my Thopter Foundry. The Emery's a distraction. Ooh, Engineered Explosives was the name. They're not worried about Emery. Okay, they get to attack. I'm going to start my turn with Emery targeting Haywire Might. Or I guess I Urza Saga first because I want to spend that mana. Okay, target Haywire Might. Let's see if we get the Stone of Eric popped here. We do indeed. And then Thopter Foundry. Or I play Sword of the Meek this turn, hold up Ceremonious Rejection. And next turn, I can Thopter Foundry and go off. Just hope I don't die to Ink Moth Nexus right now. Hardened Scales, okay. Late to the party, but still effective. They only have Colorless Mana left. I'm going to reject their Arcbound Ravager. That's a lot of damage on this Ink Moth Nexus in the future. So I'm going to have Flying Blockers basically for the rest of forever. Land is my best draw. Sick. Okay. Yeah, just the most... 1-1 one, one Thopters I can put into play in a turn is how I want to play this game. Thopter Foundry. Sacrifice Sword of the Meek. Just doing it right now. Another one. And looks like Emery is clear to attack. Okay, now I can make four Flyers and gain four life every turn. 
My next land makes it 5, my next land makes it 6, etc. I might slow my roll to put a spell guide into play, or I might not. Just easy block. It hasn't come up until now. Ooh, good one. But the Thopter Foundry, even if you're not infinite, just beats a lot of decks straight up on its own. And I still have Emery in play, so killing my Thopter Foundry basically just stopped two things from coming into play. My Sagas are ticking down, unfortunately. And I didn't draw a land, also unfortunately. I have to get Springleaf Drum here. That's just what this game is about. Target Thopter Foundry. Blue Black. Cast this. Cast Spellskite with my floating mana. And now I'm just going to pass the turn. The hooks are in. These two sagas dying is pretty rough. If, I, if I'm if i not making like three or four construct or Thopters a turn, they might pull ahead. If they have another Pithing Needle at basically any point. And that saga will someday be a Pithing Needle. They found a Ravager. Okay. Ravager doesn't do everything you want it to when there's a spell skite in play. Okay, block. Probably should have tapped that to Springleaf Drum. I still have a creature, but that one was dying anyway. Sword of the Meek gets sacked in the end step. And we're back in. Come on, lands. Ugh. Unfortunate. I want my needle here. I just have to decide what I'm going to name. It's probably just Ravager. I'll just turn that into a 2 2 creature in play. Bobble. What are you drawing? You're hellbent over there. You're drawing a hardened scales, okay? And I have a mana floating. Might as well use it. Sack the sword. And Bobble in my graveyard. Draw some more cards. I think the information's worth more than the extra card in hand right away on this board. And I can make three Thopters, so time to start poking for damage. The moment in a fair Thopter sword game where you get to start attacking feels so good. Uh, they either chose not to or forgot to activate their Hanger Back Walker in the end step. Okay, they're still just attacking with the big 8-8. They can tutor up Shadow Spear in the future. I'll do this tighter this time. Drum the creature that's about to die. And they are not bothering with their hardened scales. Interesting. Ooh, a ballista on top. That's actually a scary one. Sack my sword. It's like watching paint dry, and I love it. I have now exceeded my starting life total. Come on, lands. Lands, lands, lands. That's a land. That's a soul cauldron. Okay. Interesting. I could soul cauldron to put their soul cauldrons in check. I'm going to fetch a basic island here, and going to play Mishra's Bauble. I hope you all heard that truck just that just went really loud past my house. I love recording a uh, sound-based medium next to a road-facing window. Okay, here we go. I get some attacks here. I think two of these Thopters are safe to get in. They're making a construct right now. 5-5 five, five creature, okay. Bobble you. It's that same Ballista. Yeah, we know about that one, right. And pass the turn. Okay, they remembered to do that this time. Luckily, it's just a ground pounder without Ravager around to sack it. I draw a card. It's Emery. You draw a card. It's Walking Ballista. And I probably have to make two Thopters and exile their Arcbound Ravager all in response to this activation. Yeah, Arcbound Ravager. I think I want to give this thing's abilities to uh, Spellskite. Just make the most gigantic possible unit. Or I could do. I could play their deck and give one of my Thopters this ability. That's cool, because I have a lot of artifacts I could sacrifice and change the size of stuff pretty quickly. And I'm going to activate Thopter Foundry now, in case they have a second Pithing Needle. And I think I want to leave up Fatal Push, actually. Because if they just go for Shadow Spear, that's pretty annoying. Though I can't stop Shadow Spear and Patrick Automaton anyway. But if they get Shadow Spear, then they didn't get Needle. We're in the tight spots now. Every little decision matters. This Thopter doesn't get Modular. Oh, they got Haywire Might. Yeah, that's a good call. Going for Pathing Needle. Uh-oh. That's scary. Now they can, like, explode their whole squad all over the place. But I can Fatal Push that Arcbound Ravager in response. I can also Exile Spellskite. Or no, I can't, because it's a creature. 
that's just ability would fizzle. The redirect would fizzle, not the haywire might. Okay, so if I fatal push Arcbound Ravager now, that's a thing they don't have. Okay, so if I tap Spell Skite, fatal push, targeting the Ravager, and then I can. Uh, oh, I, I didn't care about this. I have the Spell Skite. They were about to walk into a big, stupid trap. Whoops. Yeah, I could have uh, probably blown them out here with a Spell Skite activation. I'll just take it now, I guess. Whoops. Okay, Modular's targeting Spell Skite now. They can decline this on resolution. They don't have to pump my Spell Skite. And then my Arcbound Ravager will eat my Pithing Needle. Okay, yeah, I fucked that up a little bit. I had the, the blowout ready and did not use it correctly. Okay, they get a 2-2 Ballista here. They can kill my two Thopters, or they can't because I can Spell Skite those. I'm just going to block their biggest attackers with my Thopters and go back to Turtle Mode. And I can pile all the blockers onto my Arcbound Ravager. Okay, yeah, they've realized that they can't get through this. Yeah, they were set up for a blowout there. They didn't realize the Spell Skite thing, but then I also forgot it, and they didn't get blown out, but they still can't actually get through this. Feels good. Let's go. We're a few rounds into the video. Thanks for sticking with me. Friendly reminder that if you're still here and having fun, smash that subscribe button. And if you want to play what I'm playing, you can use my affiliate link for TCG Player to support the channel while you shop for cards, and you can try any deck anytime with a cardhoarder.com loan account for Magic Online. All these links are in the video description below. Now back to the league. I'm on the play against a Kahira strategy in round 4. I'm going to keep my hand. Kahira will be some sort of control deck, whether they are a tap-out elemental kind of control deck or one with actual counterspells and stuff in it, to be determined. I'm just going to play Springleaf Drum, and I'm going to save this Mishra's Bobble, because next turn I can Ledger Shredder, Bobble, Connive, Cast Emery. That's a lot of action on turn 2. Blooded Strand from the enemy. Reordain, okay. That's a nice one to connive away. I didn't want to lose this Soul Cauldron if I didn't have to. Big Shreds. Mishra's Bobble, connive. I'll... Oh, actually, with Emery, but if they have a removal spell, I'd rather have the Soul Cauldron. I'm going to dump the Preordain and keep the Cauldron around and my land drop. Emery, let's go. Casual six permanents on turn two in Modern. Sort of the meek hit the bin, and... It was probably safe to wait on that ball wall. They were likely to fetch, but I kind of hope they do fetch away that lightning bolt, actually. i love to see it go. Goodbye. Ledger Shredder is already outgrown. Lightning bolt-related activities. Murderous Cut, probably going to take a while to find a target in this matchup. Leyline Binding is on if they want it to be. They're going up the Binstalk. Sure. Urza Saga. I love it. I could... Emery, Bobble, Manamo, Emery, Bobble, and then Soul Cauldron. Do I need to do all that? That's a lot of fun. Okay, uh, Emery, target Bobble. That's going to happen anyway. Bobble, Manamo, untap Emery. This rules. I don't even know if that's better than playing Ursa Saga and Cauldron this turn, but I'm feeling good about it. Bobble you. EI. This also lets me connive away the Murderous Cut, which I'm pretty sure is not good. Shredder. Oh, basic Island. Not exactly exciting here. Okay, I am going to discard the Island instead. And I don't play Counter Spells. I don't, I'm not in a hurry to bobble them. I am going to play the Soul Cauldron, though. And Shredder, remember, brings its own plus one counters. So it will immediately have the abilities of Verona next turn. Opponent's powerful forest rock run trial mana base can't cast this EI. Okay, Teferi's pretty good. I have pressure in play to clear the Teferi regardless of what they target with it. Okay, Shredder's gone. Ooh, Solitude. All right, they figured it out. Rich spells. Those are good. Pitching Omnath. I don't think I cash in just like plus one here. I could exile Rona and just gain an extra life. I don't think that's where I need to be. Bobble you. Breeding Pool, and then I'm going to exile Windswept Heath from their graveyard. They probably have run in six in their deck. Okay, Bobble, regular draw, the Re Emery, Urza Saga, Ledger Shredder. Soul Cauldron is also a legendary permanent. 
I don't think that changes my play here, though. Emery, Connive, Walking Ballista, okay. I can uh, discard Murderous Cut, Emery Resolves, I mill a bunch, Engineered Explosives, Haywire Might. Uh, really cool thing. Oh, shit, my Sword of the Meek. Oh, I can put it into play even if the creature's gone. Okay. I was going to say Ballista comes in as a 1-1, one, one, but I don't actually want that. Like, I do want it, but I don't want it to become bigger. A Walking Ballista triggers the Swords of the Meek. Would I rather just have a 3-5 on this board than the ability to Soul Cauldron and Pink to Fairy? Probably, actually. Yeah, let's go. Load it up. That was a roller coaster of emotions. But yeah, big creature. Send it. That was a weird turn. I hope they don't play Supreme Verdict. Plus the Teferi. They can EI here. It's not... It's pretty awkward on the mana, though. Oh, I could have pinged Teferi and just had Ballista in play. Yeah, that's also a thing. It just stays in play. EI exiled a Sacred Foundry. And they zapped it in. Okay. Prismatic Ending, Targeting Ledger Shredder. That is your second spell. I'll discard this basic island. And Shredder does go away, unfortunately. There's nothing clever to do with it on the way out. Solitude, geez. And Beanstalks are so fucked up. Targeting Emery. Okay. Well, like, I kind of wanted the Ballista the most out of all my permanents, so this worked out pretty well. All things considered. Soul Cauldron, put another counter on Ballista. Ballista already knows how to be a walking Ballista. Doesn't need to learn that trick. Orcish Bowmaster, hello, hello. You don't say. Okay, if I play Orcish Bowmaster, I can put one damage on Teferi, and now any Solitude shit is gonna hurt them more, and I can fetch a basic island to activate my Urza Saga with, and I can attack my opponent's life points directly, exiling another Solitude. Just piling up the damage here. You take five, and then I'm going to poke to fairy for one. I really actually wish these Sword of the Meeks were on something else now. I don't want my Ballista exiled, but we get what we get at this point. I'm pushing pretty good damage here. Omnath, big stupid asshole face, is here. Bowmaster, I think I want to go face. Though if I had hit the Omnath, that's guaranteed one. And then Ballista's guaranteed two, and if they cast a five mana spell, which is pretty likely with this help, then Omnath's dead. Okay, they shock in a thing, they get the mana EI, okay. Not a four mana spell, or five mana spell. Exiled Windswept Teeth, don't care, put Kahir in hand, don't care. Cool. End of turn, Construct time. We go to my turn, Bobble, Construct time. Tutor, either spell bomb is that lethal? Four, five, six, seven. Oh yeah, super fucking dead. Spell bomb, bobble, shock and breeding pool. Bounce the omnath. Cool. That was sweet. I think they chose wrong on the solitude. And I I had the information that they didn't have, but still felt pretty okay with that card being destroyed. Or like everything except the ballista. A Fatal Push really only hits Omnath in the whole deck. Go for the throw, kills everything. Spell Skite is nice. Engineered Explosives. Clearing out the beans is cool. Jiltra's Edict can hit their Planeswalkers or any big creature, but I hope to be up under them long before that matters. Fulminator Mage kind of rules, though. It's the aggressive actual Stone Rain. I'm just imagining having one stone rain in my sideboard and bringing it in versus four color control and feeling like it's a good idea. Controversial. Pithing Needle can name the One Ring. This is a card that the deck may or may not contain, but probably does. A Murderous Cut is out. Weird to bring in Go for the Throat and cut Murderous Cut. What does that mean? If I expect Graveyard Hate, Go for the Throat's better? I don't know. Weird decision, but I'm sticking with it. Bowmaster's solid, Thopter Foundry's solid. Haywire Mike can also answer a one ring. Okay, I'm gonna run it like this. I've been boarding out Preordain a lot. Who am I? What have I done with Bosch and Roll? This hand is slow and steady. I'm gonna run with it. I got both of the Preordains I left in my deck. 
it's perfect. You just board some of them out and then you draw the ones you left in and then you don't have to draw the other ones. Just like we drew it up. Opponents on six. Blue to Delta. Cool. I'm actually just going to get a water grave off of this and potentially save my Ottawara for someday. Preordain. Water grave also could curve up. Uh oh. Uh oh. Water grave could curve up into Fulminator Mage, which Ottawa does not do. I really hope to activate a Grizzlebrand creature this game. I think it's time. We're about due for that. Oh, I have Rona that can discard it. I have the Soul Cauldron. Ren and six. Okay. I have a mighty 1 3 creature. I get in there. Rona. My name is Rona. If they curb into Teferi, bouncing Rona and Saga are actually both pretty annoying. But if they bounce Saga, I get to replay Saga, play Cauldron, loot the Grizzlebrand, and I can draw seven. Prismatic ending. Pretty good. Okay. Grizzlebrand remains in my hand for the time being. Fetching Zagoth Triome. Okay. Ren's doing Ren stuff over there. Drew another land. Means they don't have to play the Ottawa still. I am just going to fetch a basic island right now and let my saga mature. This deck's full of card advantage and removal. If I can get three must answer permanents out of one permanent, I'm going to try to do it rather than just recklessly tap it for mana. Oh, Seiju. Okay. That's annoying, but mostly fine. Still a two for one. Oh, well, they have run in six plus plus Seiju against my artifact deck. Maybe it won't be a two for one for very long. Water Grave tapped. Dealing one to my construct. That's fair. Multiple Emery's in this grip. I'm going to start with a Preordain. Ooh, I like Bowmaster. Bottom, top. Time to play the Ottawa and shove in Emery. Build a Bauble into the graveyard. I have some action there. They are untapping into Hardcast Solitude, Hardcast Fury phase of the game. Picking up land number five. Omnath. Cool. We know they have a fetch land. We saw it. Here comes the mana. Double white is solitude. I was worried about them casting solitude this turn. Instead, they cast Omnath, drew a card, and played solitude. Perfectly normal stuff. What can save me here? Urza? I'm going to fire the Emery in. I mean, this deck can go infinite. There's two Sword of the Meeks. That actually rules, because I can fire Bowmaster in. The Bowmaster and the Token can both pick up a sword, because they both just milled. Expressive Iteration, I'll let that happen. Are there only red sources also? They're Rock and Triumph. That feels rough, but I guess they have a basic planes. What's the paint? What's the what's the harm? Omnath gets to fire the full boat again. D's beans dough. Orcish Bowmaster. Deal one to solitude. Put a sort of the meek up on here. I'm going to decline the other one. I think diversifying my, my threats is the way to go. Wait, what? Why didn't the other one come in? Is it a 0-0 zero, zero when the game checks? What just happened? Whenever a 1-1 one, one enters the battlefield under your control. And Walking Ballista would get it. What just I don't know what just went wrong. I honestly don't understand it. Another Solitude. I would love to have more life than I do, but they got me. Somehow. Fury, all right. Yeah, just keep it coming. I mean, the fucked up thing here is if I draw Urza, I can still just win right now. They would need to pitch cast the Solitude to kill it at instant speed. Okay, Urza off the top. Snatch this victory from the draws of defeat. Ledger Shredder. There's no Urza in my graveyard, just Soul Cauldron with. I think it's worth... Is it worth investing in, or do I just Foundry here? No, it's worth investing in. This Grizzlebrand's in my hand. I gotta get it out. Knive. Walking Ballista. All right, discard Grizzlebrand. Buckle up, nerd. And I am passing the turn here. Gotta try to survive. Gotta cling to life a little longer. Won't be easy to do. There's that Besaju that we probably knew about and I forgot. Oh no, that's a different one. I will bring back both swords this time. And get Breeding Pool tapped. Yeah, the Ren plus Besaju interaction. Not helping me out here. Prismatic ending. Goodbye. Four, five, seven, eight, nine, ten. Not quite dead yet. They can just pick up Besaju and clear the Thopter if they don't want to spend a real removal spell here. Exile to Misty Rainforest, which sets off the Omnath again. The Ren did, in fact, pick up Besaju. Yes, I'd like a land, please. I'll get this. Swamp. Still not quite dead on board. 
And my deck does have an infinite combo in it. Gotta play to my outs here. My life total will be too low to activate Grizzlebrand, though, which is mega sad because it's there. I could Ballista for one, Soul Cauldron, Grizzlebrand. Oh, wait, that's the missing three damage. Kahira gets me for Xaxes here. Well done. Okay. Bo Seiju, huh? That card's bad for me. I don't think getting more controlling is the way to win the game. I think trying to jam is still it. So that is what I will continue to do. Same deck. Send it. But now we're on the play where everything's better. Oof. A one lander with the splash land and bobble to find the next one. This hand doesn't look good. I'm going to mulligan it. This hand doesn't look good either, but I am going to keep it. We're both on six. Watery Grave tapped and pass the turn. Urza Saga, Bobble, Emery. That Bobble was a great draw. Just let me do three things on this turn instead of just play Urza Saga. I get to Saga, Emery, and draw a card. Emery found a Sword of the Meek. I'm going to wait till they fetch to Bobble. Okay, they fetched. I would like information about the cards that you have. The Seiju, great. I love seeing that one. Okay, Minamo is the draw engine with Emery. We're going off. Yeah, if they do just slam, like, Brain Source Paseju here, I don't even think that's very good. Okay, they're going for it, though. I'll get the Breeding Pool. Why not? Urza, Lord High Artificer. Yes, Artificer. <laughs> Sir, yes, Artificer. You know, oh, I can't do the Bobble Myself trick because my plan is to Minamo and draw two cards. Love this. Bang! You didn't even know it was coming your way. And I'm going to hold the bauble to keep farming information. Bulminator! Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Basic planes. Okay, I can take them off green or blue. Prismatic ending. Disappointing. Okay, that's gone. Is having an extra mana important? I could cast Emery next turn. I could go Urza plus Emery next turn. I could also just fulminate them. I'm going to Urza plus Emery. Oh, the Grizz Father. Okay, uh... Basic Island, Urza. Maybe I should be fetching my Swamps now, because I'm not that far away from 8 mana. Emery, Bobble, you. Shit! Obviously, you see a Supreme Verdict right now. But their second white source is also their blue source. They need a blue or white source to get up out of this. Damn it. Come on. Can I catch a break ever? Thought we were going to have a good match here. Do cool stuff. Put a bunch of permanents into play all at once, but no, not allowed. Okay, what we can find out though is if Fulminator Mage can take them meaningfully off of a color for long enough to, to matter. Black, black, colorless. I can take red out from under them, or no, uh, I can't hit blue. I can take green out. Green's the color I can take them off. They can cast this EI no matter what. I can't cast the Octor Foundry with what's left over because I didn't fetch Swamp Blaster in, which is a thing I said out loud. Here's the EI. Please miss. No land past the turn. No land past the turn. Up the beanstalk. No land past the turn. Ah! Boring. Just when I thought we were going to have a game. They did find their beanstalk when they have three cards left in hand. And they found basic forest, so they have Omnath mana back. Sword of the Meek right now makes a game out of this. Oh, Sword of the Meek's in my graveyard. Okay. Um, what do I do with that information? I think I play Thopter Foundry and Emery with that information. I can sacrifice Thopter Foundry to itself. I just don't think that's actually good or something I want to be doing. Of course, they have Omnath the second that they have four colors. I even Stone Rained a dual land, and they still are just like, yeah, Omnath, it's fine. Off three basics. And a fetch land. It never stops. They do have to kill two things here, though. If they just try to kill Foundry, I can sack it to itself. Get back Sword of the Meek, and then Emery casts it. If they just kill Emery, I have Thopter Foundry running. Prismatic ending. Okay. With green colorless still floating, enough to Besage you. Run in six gets the Besage you. Basically the same thing. And unless I draw an artifact naturally right now, I don't have a good play here. Artifact? Yo, I'll take that. I'm not too proud. Okay, Springleaf Drum. Get in. I guess this Ottawa is better as a land here. Just need to throw all of my resources at having a chance in this game. I'll just put a bunch of shitters into play right now. 
if I wait, they can besage you in response to activations, and I don't have enough artifacts to keep the chain going. Okay, there they are. If they besage you the Thopter Foundry, I can get my basic swamp. I don't think there's actually four... Yeah, with the Springleaf Drum in the graveyard, there's not actually four Black Pips in the deck to cast Gristlebrand. It was built with Exaxes in mind. Get the Swamp. Brennan Six picked up another Beseju. Or no, it picked up... Yeah, it did pick up Beseju, and then they just had a Misty in hand. All right. They get the mana. Here is in the hand. Here is in play. If Omnath attacks, I can't block it effectively because they could besage you one of my Thopters, and then Omnath just wins the combat and Plague wins me. I'd rather just take five. Either spell bomb. Not super helpful. That's the joke. No cards are at this point. I'm going to attack Ren and Six with all my creatures. This at least forces the action on the besage you if they want to keep their besage you loop going, which I imagine they do because it's very busted. Yep, besage you that Thopter. I would like another land. Wish I had another swap. Just slam Grizzlebrand on this board. Show him who's boss. Not currently a thing, though. I think I have to Spellbomb and draw a card. Desperate Times. Urza Saga. Okay. I'll try that for a minute. It's not good, though. And I will equip a Thopter because I can. I'll probably play, like, one more turn of this. If this turn is as busted as the last two turns have been, we don't need to really keep doing this. I can clear the the Ren this turn, and bust up the Besaju loop even through removal. But they might just kill me before then. Yeah, Besajuing my Urza Saga makes a lot of sense. Two cards left in your hand. Thopter Foundry. That's a good draw. Okay. I'm going to attack Ren in six with all my permanents. I want to make sure it's dead even through, like, Bolt plus Solitude. And now I have a completely insane... Amount of mana, if I'm able to get this off the ground at all. I will pass into their turn. I think in the upkeep, I want to probe and see if this sort of the mix is going to work. All right, we got some action off of this. Right now, there's a window for graveyard hate. Cool. Okay, while this is, while the window's open, I'm going to make as many creatures as I can. The original Omnath. You think gaining life and drawing cards is cool? Look what I'm doing. This is where they like Pyroclasm, and I just lose. I think I'll leave one mana open. I have enough things to survive the combat now, and I would rather Thopter Foundry be in my graveyard than in exile. I can sack itself if they have a Leyline Binding or something here. Ren and Six, okay. Just besage you right back in business. I have enough creatures to beat Omnath in combat, though. Even through the besage you. If I can clear that, then I have a bunch of Dingus is left over to beat up their Planeswalkers, and they're just attacking with Kahira. Maybe there is a game. Omnath gained four. If they have a fetch land here, they can do the full boat, but dealing four to me and my Planeswalkers doesn't really matter here. I don't have any lands left to tutor for, so turning that into a Thopter is as good as that's going to get. Okay. Lock Omnath with everything. Just pile it all up. Yeah, that's gone. You have a 3-2 Vigilance in play. Supreme Verdict. Yep, okay. Okay, one more Thopter Foundry in my deck, off the top. Go for the throat, right on time. This fucking Grizzlebrand, man. If there was just another Swamp in my deck, just in deck building, if there was another black source of mana in my deck, Grizzlebrand would be running all over this game right now. This EI into EI. They have one more minute, and... Nine more cards, or seven more cards in their deck than I do. Beating me on all the important metrics. And they're looping Beseju. They can start going after my actual lands now, if they even care about that, which I, I'm sure they don't. Reordain, can we do something here? Oh, Soul Cauldron is not bad, but doesn't help me here. And you're not explosives for two. I will keep that around, though. That kills Ren and up the Beanstalk. And Sword of the Meek, but I'm not worried about that one. I'm just going now. Okay, we're back to stability. Whatever that means. Jeez, up the beanstalk, another one. They could have just besaged my engineer explosives if I waited. And they would have gotten a Ren activation. I'm just not really interested in all that happening. Harold. Rona and Kumar go to White Castle. 
I could have flipped this right away, but I think it's better as a looter. And they just give me the old solitude hands. Decking them is genuinely my plan at this point. Going for the throat. I can only transform Ron as a sorcery. There's no like extra four life to gain here. Cool. Omnath. Right after I got tricked into using my go for the throat. I suspect we're dead, but I've suspected that for like the last six turns. And we're still playing. Are there fetchables left in your deck? There is a Zagoth Triome. We got a Boda Mana. I'm really disappointed in the deck building that I just... They've besaged me so many times. Every mana source I could have could be in play right now. I had to sack this Bringleaf Drum on that turn to get Thopter Foundry going. Shoving Fury into play, trying to put Lethal on board. And... <laughs> uh, the ultimate insult on the final turn. Okay, GG's. We got what, one, one round left? Yep, one round left. Playing for a positive record. Let's do it. For the absolute best Magic the Gathering apparel on the market, check out the link in the video description to coalesceapparel.shop and be sure to use the code BOSTONROLL for 10% off when you check out. I'm on the play in the final round. Positive record hangs in the balance. I am going to keep this hand. And I think this is a bobble me situation. I don't really care what they're doing because it's not like I have a ton of selection available myself. I can even just wait. A Fatal Push is the only card I could draw that I might care about on turn one. And turns out that I might have cared about that. A Bobble myself. Emery is on top. That's not who I'm looking for. Water Grave tapped. And they are on Hammer. Reading Pool and Aether Spell Bomb. I think I just shove Thopter Foundry right now. Fetch the island. Shove Thopter Foundry. This is a really nice one to have in play versus the possibility of hammer. I can't bowmaster their thing. I can't bowmaster anything with Giver in play. Ooh. A tapped glass pool mimic. This is not hammer. They would never play a card like that. Interesting. What is this? Is there some kind of like collected company clones deck? Uh, I, I don't actually know what this is. I'm going to invest in an Aether Spell Bomb. Attacking with this Giver of Runes. I don't want to call it Reckless, but it was certainly a choice. If they do that again, I can ping it and block it. It didn't do it again. End step. I think I want the other Watery Grave. Black cards could matter here. Hashtag Black Cards Matter. Okay, we might get like... uh. What is the name of that idiot? The 2-3 the three for 3. That kind of counters the spell. My brain is farting right now, but you all know what I mean. I kind of hope they do actually hit me with that thing. They did not. Okay. Preordain, pretty solid. I'm not going to shove Urza into that Geist. Oh, spell center sprite. Fudge me. Well, I could bounce this if I think I care about Preordain more, but I don't. Oh, I actually can't bounce this because of Giver. Never mind. They got me good. We're fairies, huh? Okay, black, blue. Another Thopter Foundry. Putting me in the squeeze between Spellstutter Sprite and... Why am I brain farting so hard? This is driving me nuts. I've played this card so many times. When they cast it, I'll happily shout the name out. It might just draw a card with Spellbomb now. Island. Emery. Okay, that's cool. This is good enough that I think they will try to counter it if they can. Spell Queller, that's the card. I kept thinking Supreme Phantasm in my head, but I knew that wasn't it. Okay. Spell Queller. Got my real good card out there. If they have Solitude, there seems to be a pause here. If they Solitude me, that's really good. Okay, I have a 3-3. They got their flying creatures. I will eventually be able to start gaining life. I can gain two life and make two one ones right, right now. That's just not really where I want to be. Okay, here comes these. I go to eight. They do have a solitude. What a sicko. Probably taking Urza. I'll float a blue on the way out. Just in case I need that. I'm glad I didn't get ephemerated. Solitude pitching solitude. Cool. I am not going to make the one one here. Re Emery. Okay. Uh. I want to attack with my Construct first. They've got Gibber of Runes on the ground here. A second Spell Queller is a beating, but if this Emery just flips Sword, we can never lose. But the thing about Spirits is they always have the second Spell Queller. 
Spirit Squad MTG, I'm mad at you. I know you're watching. So here's the trick. It's if I draw a a uh, a sword or mill into one, I need a second non-token artifact in play. So I can't just pop this sacred or this thopter founder yet. A wire might get in there. This one's cool because it gains me three when I sack it into a thing. Except they have the third spell queller. All right, my spells are so quelled. And now I don't even have a good attack because they can just block and pro colorless. Well, we're in trouble. The opponent heard me wondering, sputtering, trying to remember what the name of spell queller is. And they were like, don't worry, I'll show it to you. Okay, Thopter Foundry sacrifice Thopter Foundry. If I block, I am still dead. I have to make another one. That sucks. Block, block. Going down to basically nothing here. My construct gets little. Who let this deck have solitudes in it? That's not even fair. Our kind of Amiria, gross. All right, I'm dead. Okay, the uh, counter your spell, flying creature, counter your spell, flying creature, four turns in a row, a little too much. Edict, fatal push, go for the throat. Shadow Spear, Engineered Explosives. I'm coming for them here. The flip side of Spell Queller is if you can kill that thing, the House of Cards collapses. I was hoping this would be a match where we get to finally activate Grizzlebrand, but after last round where it rotted in my hand for the entire game, when we were so close and just some real card would have got it going, this could be an Aether Vial deck. Uh, a Wire Might. I don't know if I need that necessarily grizzle brand you kiss my ass i'm mad at it orcish bowmaster it kills spell stutter sprite but basically nothing else though there are a lot of spirits that die to orcish bowmaster if they are actually spirits or if they are just like blue white flash junk okay, bowmaster actually does seem pretty mid like it came into play that game and then did nothing for the rest of the game all this other removal much more interested I'll keep this pile of cards, and I can bobble myself, decide if I like that card, and then... Oh, I quite like the Urza. Thank you. Manamo, Springleaf Drum, and do I want this other bobble? Yeah, let's, let's get it in. And bobble you. Teferi Time Raveler. Okay, that's a card you play. Two Urzas. That's perfect for when the first one is guaranteed to get Spell Quellered. Either vial. Confirmed that's a card you have. Saga. Rona. Cool thing about Urza is that he's a legend. I can Rona twice next turn. Or no, I actually need the Rona untapped to cast Urza. Never mind. I can cast Urza and then also Rona, though. She does have two taps. One of them's for mana, one's for Urza. Or one of them's for looting. Okay, I'm going to fetch shock, turn on the black here. Just get Urza in while the getting's good. That untaps Rona. Urza's in there. I'm gonna loot with Rona. Glad I did. There's a spell I can cast. Emery. Untaps Rona. Oh, we're going off. Truly going off here. And there's Mistress Bobble in the graveyard. Urza and Urza Saga in my hand. I'm gonna see if the first Urza survives this turn, and then I can loot away the other, or if I just pile them in. Giver of Runes, okay. This might just be a Shadow Spear Coast to Coast situation. They have this one lander with two Aether Vials, and I know they have Teferi, which is a brick if they don't have actual lands. Land number two. Feels like cheating. End step. Loot with Rona. Children's Edict. And Urza appears to be surviving the turn. I'll just rock with the Edict. And I can go one, two, Activate Construct. Tutor up. Do I want Shadow Spear? Is that the game we're trying to play here? Aether Spell Bomb can break up. Spell Queller. I don't have a Paling Needle in for these two Aether Vials. All right, Shadow Spear, it is. Emery can cast Mishra's Bauble from the graveyard. Cast that. Something's happening in response. They're Violing in response. Okay. Spell Stutter. That's fun. Okay. I can Shultred's Edict them now. I'm actually going to do that. 
Each opponent sacrifices a non-token creature. This actually doesn't matter because Bob will cost zero. This is actually totally free. They just sack the spell stutter and they get to keep their giver. Yep, duh. Tight one me. Okay. I'm gonna loot with Rona. Or what does this cost to transform? Five, one, two, three. Nope. That's that's a smaller number. Loot with Rona. Into Re Rona. Re Rona or Re Emery. Re Emery's way better than Re Rona. Especially since I get to Re Rona off the Re Emery. Am I making sense? Okay, Emery get in, untap Rona. I can I'm gonna keep the original one. Because there's a possibility I still end up with a blue source this turn to Manama with. Spell bomb in the graveyard. Okay, Rona. Sort of the meek hits the bin right where I want it. Urza Saga in play. Okay. Or I can actually equip Shadow Spear. Probably should have put it on Urza in attack there. But I'm going to put it on a big old construct. But that gets blown out by Teferi. It's fine. It's all good. Make you do it. If you're bouncing my construct, you're not bouncing my Urza. I am 26 cards into my deck on turn four. That's pretty nice. Okay, they're passing the turn, which doesn't necessarily mean anything because they are a deck that operates almost entirely at instant speed. It means they didn't to ferry me, which is nice. I think I'm going to go for an Aether Spell Bomb here. I think that's better than Bobble at this phase of the game. I could even do multiple things with the Manamo. Tap the spring leaf drum for blue, play either spell bomb, violing something in here. Come get me. Archon of Amira. Okay, that's my spell for the turn. Guess I'll just attack. Hey, this costs five to transform. I can go one, two, three, four, five. I mean, I can do it. It cost me the Urza Saga activation. What do I think is more important? I mean, just I'm in mush mode here. Okay. Shadow Spear is free. Either Spell Bomb's free. Three. Oh, hold on, hold on. Can Urza manipulate this to a spot where, like, if I play the Saga or activate the Saga, that's one, two, three, four, five. I can do both here. Hold up. Activate this. Then one, two, three, four, five. There it is. Transform Rona. She's a scary one. Here I come. Rona and 7-7 seven, seven Construct attacking. It's really satisfying to me when the Construct attacks and lines up with the tapped Shadow Spirits holding. That, that looks super unnatural. No thanks. If they block Rona, I get a card from their hand. Okay, they are just sucking up three of the trample damage here. Ooh, we've got a Solitude also. Good stuff. What's this going for? The Rona. Okay, I gain a bunch of life. That's fine. Cost you two cards. I gain a bunch more life. Okay. What did you have to pitch to do that? The Teferi's gone. Okay. All right. I mean, I'm certainly ahead here. That was fun, finding the line with the Urza Saga to do both. Okay. Uh, avoiding any nonsense. They just didn't take up this vial after also not activating the vial. I think they don't have a two, and they don't have two threes. That's what I just learned. They did just get a draw step, but we'll see if it matters shortly. Draw for turn. Ottawara is a powerful thing to have access to. Make the construct. And they scooped it up. They don't even want to see what I'm tutoring for. All right. Game one, I got nothing going. Game two, they got nothing going. Like if you're doing anything underneath this deck, you can collapse it. But playing into their hands like I did in game one is a recipe for... Disaster. In Pithing Needle, can they Mother of Runes or Giver of Runes, even if they don't have a bunch of vials in play? Maybe I do want access to this. And Mistress Bobble versus the Archon of Amiria deck is just horrifying. But also, Mistress Bobble is part of my engine to get ahead of things like the Archon of Amiria. I wonder if it's just a Soul Cauldron. That one you kind of have to be ahead or at parity to really cash out on. Either that or preordain, and I think I want to keep all of my options to be smooth against this deck because we saw what happened game one when you're unsmooth. Snap keep this one, great hand. I hope they have either vial on one. Oh, Mystic Gate either vial. I hope that's your only land. I'm a good sport. Bithing needle. 
Can we get a Rage Scoop? Did they keep another double Vile Hand with only Mystigate for mana? Fingers are crossed. Aether, Vile. Shut it down. I also drew Sword this turn. I was so excited about the Aether Vile, it just didn't even register that I have the full combo as well. Oh, boo. Having lands? That's broken. Stoneforge Mystic. That's suddenly a card in their deck. Cool. Well, I have Fatal Push in my hand. Not too worried about it. Cauldra Complete is over there. Fetch Shock. Hope they don't have a Force of Negation. Fatal Push. I could Explosives on Zero to get Emery in right now while they're tapped out. Explosives on Zero, not exactly high impact, but I think it's fine because I could just pop it and replay it if that becomes a concern. Either Vile's up to two, still sleeping. Cauldra is one of the six cards in their hand. Give her. Okay. That's ugly. Urza Saga, do you do anything here? I only have one artifact in the graveyard and it's Thopter Foundry. It's a pretty good one. I think I'm actually going to save the Urza Saga and just develop the Thopter Foundry here. Because my plan is to play Sword of the Meek and just sink all my mana into Thopter Foundry from here on out. Using the Saga now means that I'm off making Constructs, and that's my backup plan if they spell Quell my Sword of the Meat. I don't care if it gets spell stuttered. Oh. Third land, ETP tapped. This is my window. They have to have an Exile spell. Soul Cauldron. The fun of one of. Sword of the Meek. What do you think? Can you beat it? And this Engineered Explosive just sitting here can do whatever it needs to do. You just die, or it doesn't need to die because Sword of the Meek dies to itself. Okay, I'm just going to pass here. But I mentioned popping Engineered Explosives for zero earlier and then replaying it on whatever number I need it on. But now I can sack it to Thopter Foundry. It costs less and adds something to my board than just sacking it for zero. I'm pretty sure this is a deck that cannot beat Active Thopter Sword with just three or four mana. They have to shut it down basically this turn, or I'm just going to have a better Air Force than them for the entire game. Skyclave Apparition. Okay. Solid. It doesn't actually break up anything here. Oh, it does do that. Okay. Well, I will, uh, in response, sacrifice Sword of the Meek. And then I will, in response, sacrifice Pithing Needle. At least then it's in my graveyard where Emery can use it. They do get a nice big Vile activation on three here, though. Let's find out together if that matters. Back up Emery. Tap the Emery I have for Pithing Needle. I think I should attack first. Yeah, this is free money. If they Vile in Spell Queller to counter my Pithing Needle, then they can also block for free, but I want to at least deal four to them on the way through if they have it. Okay, Needle on the stack. Here comes a Queller. Yep, yeah, that's fine. I still got Saga cranking. I still have Thopter Sword active. I'm trying to decide if having Agatha Soul Cauldron in play matters right now compared to being able to Saga or Thopter, and I don't think it does. They have unlocked their Aether Vial here on turn six. That doubles the mana they have every turn. If they can catch up, this is where it starts. Sword of Fire and Ice. Well, guess what, kids? These Thopters are blue. I think Saga tokens are more useful to me here than more Thopters. And one of them's on a limited time budget. The other I can do anytime. Thopters, Thopters. It's time for a big uh, Shadow Spear. Oh, they're doing something. Violing Deputy of Detention. That's fun. Wowie. See you later, Constructs. That was a good one. A Springleaf Drum. Oh, Spellbomb right now relocks the Vial down. I'm actually getting Spellbomb. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, wait, no, it doesn't because of Giver of Runes. I'm such a brick. Yeah, I don't know how cards work. I just probably outsmarted myself right out of this game. Okay, I'm just going to pass now. Luckily, Protection from Colorless also knocks Sword of Fire and Ice off of a creature. I'm hoping to get a mid-combat blowout here somehow. Because I can Spellbomb every turn with Emery. They can protect their creature every turn with Giver. But if they... Protection from Colorless, a creature that's attacking with Sword of Fire and Ice, 
then the Giver's Tap, the sword falls off, I can block it with my blue Thopters. If they pro blue to get through the Thopters, I can bounce with Spell Bomb. Kinda got it both ways here. Equipping the Deputy. Yeah, that's a good one to bounce. <laughs> I think they found the line. Then this kills Emery every turn. Woof. Okay, I think I cannot afford to lose Emery right now. Though, violing it back in also does that. God, this is... This sucks. Deputy Detention plus either Bile is just checkmate. Damn you, Spirit Squad! Okay, what do I have to do? I have to... Engineered Explosives on one. If I tap out, though... No, I think it's fine. It's not fine. No, it's fine. Okay, sacrifice my Explosives. They can Vile the Deputy right back in. If they clear Emery before we get to my turn, that sucks. Just let me untap. Let me untap. Let me untap. Solitude. Just from the top rope, there's that card. I was already worried about the card I could see and couldn't beat. And then they have another one. Okay. How do we make this happen? Mishra's Bauble, get in. Do I lead on Agatha's Soul Cauldron? Do I lead on Emery? I think I lead on Soul Cauldron. Because now if Emery's trigger resolves, I can immediately do stuff. Emery. They milled in Urza. Okay. You're in check. If they tap this Aether Vial, I have infinite life. They bobble you. They're drawing another Queller. Okay. All right, well, you're in trouble, homie. Let's see if I can uh, navigate this one. Here comes the Vial. Deputy Detention targeting what? This is the last decision that's going to be made this game. If they target a Thopter, it's actually really interesting because I can get infinite life in response, but then all my Thopters are gone, including the Thopters that know how to be Urza. But I guess I just float infinite mana and make infinite life over the top of losing my infinite Thopters. Okay, they went for Emery. That one I do not care about. Exile Urza from the graveyard. Are we done? Plus one counter on Thopter. And let's do the thing. Infinite life and Thopters over the top of your deputy detention. Always yield, always yes. I don't really have to do this over the top of deputy detention, but I'm just hoping to get a concession. Can we stop? But now that I've started, I kind of have to keep going because if they have removal for my individual creature that has a plus one counter on it, this actually stops. In real life, I would simply declare I have infinite life and infinite Thopters, you have to pick a number. I have 1 billion life and 1 billion Thopters, which is not a board state this deck can beat. But on Moto, I have to decide where is enough, if enough is a thing that we can comprehend. There's a flavor text that I reference often. It's, I believe, the 7th edition printing of Greed. It's something like the uh, one of the Western Paladin's advisors asked him when when is enough, and he told the advisor's corpse that he has no time for people who can conceive of enough. That's how I feel right now. Okay, <laughs> we tapped him out. Just squeeze the neck until they can't breathe anymore. Okay, a positive record. Grizzlebrand was a brick. We never did the thing. There was a game where if we had a fourth black land in the deck, Grizzlebrand would have been on the stack and would have been insane. There was a game where we could have given a creature Grizzlebrand's activated ability, but it was when we were at or five life and couldn't actually use it. That was actually the same match, I think. Unfortunate, this fun little interaction never came together. Soul Cauldron. Nutty, though. Turning any creature into Urza and then combo Thoptering out with a Thopter that has all the decks of Urza. Oh, that's my style of magic. Definitely a real life deck. Clicking through this, especially if against a deck like Tron. Like, there are some decks that actually can beat Infinite Thopters and Infinite Life if you pass the turn. If they play, like, Oblivion Stone and pop it, you're back to zero, and then they can reset the game with Karn and deal with Infinite Life. Those decks, you actually do have to click through it one mana at a time until you have five mana, then flip it one spell at a time until you can blister them out all in one turn. That's really miserable to have to play through. Glad we didn't do that today. Serial was trying to get a Soul Cauldron pseudo reanimator thing going with this build of the deck you could cut these two grizzle brands for like another bowmaster and another ledger shredder or just you know, some other cards and the deck immediately gets better if you do want to lean into pseudo reanimator 
maybe you have to play more of this sort of thing, like Grizzlebrand and Razakath, and then maybe a third Cauldron to make sure you always have them. I don't know what it would take to make that version of the deck fully viable. That's a totally different brew exercise. This was fun, though. Soul Cauldron Urza. Grizzlebrand notwithstanding. This feels like it's something. I don't know if it keeps up with the Omnath scam modern metagame, but that felt like something to me. Serial, thank you for sending me this deck. Everyone else, thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, check out the Patreon, and all the stuff that keeps the channel going, and I'll see you next time.